Hello everyone, Inventor719 here, and in today's video we are going to be making a door security system, kind of like a shocking doorknob thing. Anyway, what you're going to need for this project is a disposable camera, more specifically the flash circuit board inside of the camera, but we'll get to that in the next segment. You're going to need some alligator connectors or wire clips, some wire, I have some stereo wire, scissors, some duct tape, some scotch tape, and some aluminum foil. So here's all these disposable cameras I have that I was talking about. Basically, I went to my local like uh, Black's store or like any store that develops these disposable cameras and basically they just throw them out afterwards. So I was able to get like almost a hundred of these disposable cameras and what you're looking to get out of them are these circuit boards. Um, they, they all look a little different, but they all will basically be the same components. You'll have your battery posts. This one connects between this and that. Anyway, you'll have your battery posts, a big capacitor, and your flash. And this is what we're going to use to make the door knob shocker. This is the main component. Pretty easy to take out of there, so I won't show you guys. But if you do need to know how, just look up on different videos. I've made tons of things with these, like tasers. Um, coil guns, etc. But uh, in today's video, we're going to be doing something a little different. Here's the circuit board we're going to be using in today's video. As you can see, I used the battery that came inside the camera and just taped it up with some electrical tape. And in case you've never played with these before, basically, real quick, run down how they work. Most of them will have a button that was like the button on the front of the camera. So if you push and hold this button, you can hear it very faintly charging the capacitor. There's a really high pitched whistling, whistling noise. So once you hear that noise, you know it's fully charged. So uh, be very careful now not to touch any of the contacts, especially the, those two on the back of the capacitor. I'll show you though with a screwdriver, if I uh, short circuit the capacitor, what happens? Big spark, and yes, I've touched it before by hand. It really hurts. This capacitor on it, sometimes they say I've heard I've read some that say around 300 volts, so it is quite a zap. So first we're going to be making the wires to connect to the circuit board. So here I have two equal length lengths of my speaker wire with both ends stripped. And so what we're going to do is use these alligator connectors and if you've never used them before, you just take the exposed end of your wire, put it in between the little groove there. It's kind of hard to do sometimes. You can take the rubber insulator off put it in between the groove, then using some pliers, just crush it in there. Just like that. So go ahead and do that to both of them. So now that we have our two assembled cables, all we have to do is find the two prongs on the capacitor and just connect one to one side and connect one to the other side. I'm gonna connect them staggered, kinda like that, because if those metal prongs touch, it will short out there instead of at the doorknob. So here's the other two ends of those wires. One of them is going to be connected to the metal on the doorknob, and the other one we have to make some type of button for the current to go through the intruder's hands. So what I'm gonna do is just cut off a little piece of tin foil, and this is dependent on your doorknob design, but I'm gonna make mine into a square about the same size as a quarter. So maybe fold it a couple times. There you go. Something like this. And now take either end of the wire, place it on top so it makes a good connection, then just put a little piece of duct tape on top. It's also important to ensure that the duct tape covers the entire back side of the piece of tin foil. So when we place this on the doorknob, it doesn't just automatically ground out, whereas it would need something to jump between the two, such as your hand. So now is a good time to test out the circuit. As you can see, I have my circuit board with the wires way down there coming up to these two terminals. So it's all charged up. So when you touch the bare wire piece to the tin foil, it should spark. It did very nicely. We're ready to install. All right, so here's the doorknob we're gonna be using in today's video. And to start off the install, hopefully you guys can see this fine. Um, I had to place the camera on my stove as my large tripod's not here right now. So in today's video, just as it's a demonstration purposes, we're going to be using the duct tape since it's much stickier. But if you actually wanted to hide it, I'd recommend using something like this invisible tape. 
Anyway, um, so basically we can start with that patch we just made of the aluminum foil and duct tape and then essentially just take another piece of duct tape make it into a loop again hopefully you guys can see this fine I'll show you once it's all done anyway but just essentially make a loop place it on the duct tape side of your little button thing and then just simply place that button on the side of the doorknob uh, I'll do it this way so the wire is facing the back just like that I'll, I'll add some more tape to secure it a little better and then take another little square of duct tape just like this and then the other wire that's just an open terminal you're going to go ahead and put that duct tape over the stripped part of the wire and place that uh, anywhere on the metal that you just attached the button to and let me bring my camera over so you can see that very nicely so as I said there is the button we just created right there then on the other side I just simply taped the wire to the doorknob okay so to finish it off I put a little more duct tape on the outside so there's no way that this metal is touching this metal again that wire is nicely secured on that side then I use my invisible tape to run the wire down to the bottom along the bottom of the door and then there's the electric charge pack over there now I know what you're thinking that uh, you'd have to be dumb to touch that doorknob after seeing this but I think the idea is more or less since robbery happens in the nighttime if it was dark in here I'll give you a quick example but it's still daytime outside from a few steps away if you're in a rush maybe your eye level is like this you're not seeing much if you know what I mean anyway so there it is let's go ahead and fire it up and give it some testing so there's the doorknob all loaded up I charged up the capacitor and for testing today um, I don't really want to shock myself with 300 volts I've done it before by accident so I have this insulative oven mitt covered in tin foil for conductivity so anyway there's the doorknob I'm gonna go pretend like I'm a robber and just go ahead and grab it and see if it shocks me so I think it did go off but because the glove was so big you couldn't see the spark so I'm gonna be using this little bit of a bent knife to see if I can get it to go off just by hand here gosh this is tough there it goes I don't know if you saw that little spark but it did go off by hand but for the views and the likes I'm gonna do it with my very own hand alright she's all charged up now before I do this please be sure to like this video because I'm about to taser myself just for the views so uh, I guess there's no way of knowing if I'm faking it but I promise I'm not here we go I'm gonna be a robber and just go ahead and grab that doorknob like I'm trying to enter a house ah oh, god that hurts alright well there you go now my heart's beating a little too fast but do it for the views so there it is the setup again doorknob with the charger at the bottom hopefully I did enough testing to show you guys that it truly does work including shocking myself just for fun so uh, since my hand is still tingling please be sure to like this video and subscribe for more awesome videos if you are someone who's seen the last video with the 3d printed project um, I know who the winner is and I'll be releasing that video later this week so please stay tuned for that and as always please like comment and subscribe Here's a little bonus clip if you stay to the very end. I was thinking of why reasons people would dislike this video. And the main one I thought of is just because how obvious it may be if it's not dark enough. And um, depending on the doorknob design, uh, this button here always has to be on a piece of metal that the hand would touch. And I realized if I'm trying to open a door, I almost always touch this piece, which is also connected by the, a shaft to the other side of the door. So there's probably a way to do it so that... All of this can be inside and they would shock the intruder on the outside but anyway um, I did it this way in this video because it was easier faster cheaper everything like that so I hope you guys still enjoyed the video and like I said before please like comment and subscribe thanks for watching